Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by the Authentication, Validation, and Management Toolkit for those AP vendor maintenance teams that still have a mostly manual process and need fraud prevention at each critical step of the vendor maintenance process. Go to DebraRRichardson.com to see the authentication techniques, internal controls, best practices, and what template forms, vendor communications, and desktop procedures are included. Stay tuned. Each time I make a change to any of my personal accounts online, I receive a notification that at a minimum says a change was made to my account and if I didn't initiate the change to contact them. So in this episode, we are going to talk about how you can implement the same type of notification in your vendor setup and maintenance process. So welcome to episode 42, send a notification to vendors after updates in the vendor master file. And I have to admit this is a blog post and actually it was the very first blog post that I ever did on my site um, last year back in October and I realized I never had a podcast for it. So I am giving this to you on a podcast and then I will um, link to the actual blog post in the show notes if you'd like to navigate to it on my site. So let's talk about notifications to vendors after updates in the vendor master file. So just like online companies, Amazon, Google, whomever, um, your bank can send those notifications to you, the same can be done for the vendors in your vendor master file by sending a post update notification using the previous communication information if that was something that was changed to notify the vendor of the change. So you wanna include in the notification general fields such as address or banking that were changed and your department's contact information. But you don't wanna include the actual details changed. Just like those emails that you receive, it doesn't say that your bank account number was changed from this to this. It just tells you that your bank account number was changed and to contact them if you didn't initiate that change. And that should be enough information to alert your vendors to contact your department if they did not initiate the change. And this is key because with vishing and phishing um, cyber schemes today, no matter how the supporting documentation was collected or who updated the vendor record, you cannot be too careful when protecting the vendor master file from fraud. So you might be wondering, what are the key fields that warrant that notification? Well, my recommendation is those fields are those that include confidential or sensitive personal identifiable information that are used for authentication or that can affect payment. And depending on your company processes or industry, the key fields may be more or less than the six that I have recommended here. So the first one is the legal name. And again, that legal name along with number two, the social security number or tax ID, both of those in combination is what you use to validate with the IRS uh, 10 match. And it's also another way to just validate that you are dealing with a real vendor. Now the next one is key is the address and this can be their remit address or tax address and this is really because you want to make sure that if 
for example, a remit address was changed and the vendor has a check payment method that you're not rerouting or a cyber criminal is not successful in getting you to reroute their check payments. Also, if it's the tax address that's being changed, you want to make sure that that is accurate and valid as well because you don't want to have a vendor who does not receive their 1099 if that's a, a reportable vendor. So any address change will require a notification be sent to the vendor. The next one is obvious. Um, number four is the banking details. And again, you do not want to reroute ACH payments to a successful cyber criminal. So you want to reach out to the vendor and just let them know that their banking details have changed. And hopefully it's just a notification because they were the ones that initiated the change. Now, number five and six are related to emails. And number five is the remittance email. And the remittance email here is key because you wanna make sure that the remittance actually gets to the vendor so they know how to post your uh, payment. And that eliminates a call to accounts payable. So you wanna make sure that the remittance email is valid. And then you also, number six, wanna make sure that the contact email that that change is valid as well because if you do not have a valid contact email, then you can't email for confirmation of the change in the first place. And just to be clear here, the notification is a post change. I've got other processes where you email the contact to verify or confirm before the change. And in order to do that, you have to have a valid contact email on file. So that was the six, the legal name, social security number, or tax ID, um, the address, the banking details, the remittance email, and the contact email. Those were the key fields that I recommend um, at least be sent post notifications when they have been changed. Now this could be the perfect time of year depending on when your fiscal year ends. If it's a calendar year, you know, this is a great time to start creating those additional processes and putting them into place before you get into the busy season for accounts payable. When you know you will start receiving all those invoices that have been in desk all year and new vendors will need to be created to pay them, um, updates will, will come in for vendor records so that they can now get paid because now everybody's looking at those invoices that haven't been paid for the year. So if your team is responsible or also responsible for issuing those vendor 1099s and 1042s and that related IRS tax filings, right now is the perfect time to update your processes so that you can make sure that when you're ready to generate those forms that you have the correct information on file and that you maintain that correct information and make sure you don't have any fraud in your vendor master file by following this notification process as well as other internal controls, authentication techniques, and best practices found at DeborahRRichardson.com. So you may be wondering, what are your options to implement this post update notification? So I've outlined five options to implement this post update notification. And the first one is that vendor self-registration portal. If your company has implemented a portal to automate the vendor setup and maintenance process, that portal may have configured a notification email back to the vendor whenever the record is updated. Even if the change in the portal was made by the vendor, a change to the record should still trigger a notification. You may wanna confirm that the setting is turned on and that the email wording is applicable. The second way is if you don't have a vendor portal or if you have a vendor portal and that function is not available, 
then you can look at your accounting system and ERP. So if your accounting system or ERP has not been configured to send an email automatically when fields on the vendor record are updated, consider requesting an enhancement to add that functionality. This may not be possible with some of the out-of-box or cloud-based systems, but it could be possible with larger ERPs that are maintained by your IT or development team. And as an example, we were able to implement that um, back in my practitioner life within SAP and then also within PeopleSoft. Now the third way is using robotics process automation or RPA. So if your current vendor portal or accounting system or ERP does not offer automated confirmation processes, consider RPA. RPA will allow team members or employees to talk to other digital systems and configure triggered responses based on rules for repetitive tasks. So a change in a vendor record triggering a form letter or a notification to be sent appears like a candidate. Check with your leadership and or the IT development team to see if this is an option since software may, be, may need to be purchased and team members may need to be trained. The fourth way is a manual email. So if any of the automated options above the vendor portal, accounting system, ERP, RPA are not available to you, there's always email. Create an email template to make the process easier that you or the whole team can use and develop a process to pull and review vendor master file changes and confirm the manual notifications were sent. And I say confirm that they were sent because sending a manual email is a manual process. And when things get busy, sometimes those manual processes are not prioritized and they are not done. So just make sure you have a process where you can track and monitor that they're actually being sent. And this also goes with the last option, which is that manual letter. So if you don't have the automation options and if you do not have an email on file for the vendor, then you're left with the manual letter. It takes the longest, however, it is still a valid notification. So this is, again, the most manual process and it really should be an incentive for collecting the email address at the time of vendor setup. But just like the email option, use a template to make the process easier and again, track to make sure that those manual letters are going out. So just to do a quick summary of the episode, send a notification to vendors after updates in the vendor master file. I looked at or recommended six key fields that should trigger the notification. That is the legal name, social security number and tax ID, address, banking details, remittance email, contact email. And then I identified four options to implement. One was a vendor portal. Number two was the accounting system or ERP. Number three was robotics process automation or RPA. Number four was manual email and number five was manual letter. Now I would love to hear from you if I missed anything, if you've got any recommendations for keeping your vendors in the loop when changes are made, go ahead and comment wherever you're listening or send me an email at deborah at deborahrrichardson.com. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 42nd episode of Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. 